so here we have a pig heart in the pericardial sac. So what is the pericardial sac? That is going to be this part right here. And the sac part is made up of two layers. Uh, the outer part is going to be the fibrous pericardium. This inner part that's a lot smoother, that is going to be the parietal layer of the serous pericardium. So if you remember the parietal versus visceral layers, this part specifically is actually that parietal pericardium. Then we have the surface of the heart, and that is what is called the epicardium, or the visceral layer of the serous pericardium, or the visceral pericardium. In between these two serosal layers right here, and the reason why we're saying serosal is because they are serous membranes, and they secrete serous fluid within this potential space, which is called the pericardial cavity. So these two specifically are the serosal layers. They will secrete serous fluid. The epicardium, or the visceral pericardium, makes the surface of the heart. The parietal pericardium is the inside of this pericardial sac. And then the fibrous pericardium, that what makes, that's what makes up the outside of that pericardial sac. Here on the right-hand side, we have a whole uncut heart. Here on the left-hand side, we have a cut heart. So it's a good idea when you're in the lab to have both. That way you can compare the two. And especially when you're looking at the cut heart, it will make things on the whole heart make a whole lot more sense. So first of all, how do you know you're looking at the anterior or the posterior side? Um, the way I like to describe it is that the anterior side is going to be a little bit less busy. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we were to flip this over, you see all of this right here? Those are uh, part of the pulmonary vessels, and uh, another vessel we'll look at in just a second here. Um, but when you kind of see all this busyness right here, that means you're looking at the posterior side. So if we flip this back, of course, then that means this is the anterior side. Right here, the pointy side, or the pointy part of the heart, I should say, that is called the apex. And the apex is mostly associated with the left ventricle. So that means when you're looking at the heart, this is going to be the left ventricle. This will be the right ventricle. So you might be saying, okay, well, where are those atria? Well, look at these structures here. These little flap-like structures are called auricles, and they're actually extensions of the atria. So since this is the right side, this would be the right auricle, and that tells us the general area of the right atrium. And then this is the left auricle, so that means the left atrium is gonna be in this area. So always when you're starting, don't forget those directional terms we covered, you know, since A and P1 kind of anterior, posterior, left, right, superior, inferior, all that good stuff, and that will um, help you identify other things. So the first thing I'd like to point out is this groove right here. And if you remember, grooves are called sulci, which is plural for sulcus. And since we are on the anterior side, and it is in between the ventricles, then that makes this the anterior interventricular sulcus. So where's the posterior one? Well, of course, we would just have to flip this over. And the posterior interventricular sulcus is right here. We have another sulcus that goes around the circumference of the heart. And that is going to be the coronary sulcus. So if you remember the coronary sinus, which is that large vessel on the posterior side of the heart, um, that is going to sit within the coronary sulcus. So remember, anterior interventricular, posterior interventricular, and then that coronary si sulcus, excuse me, is going to go around the circumference of the heart. All right, so let's look at some vessels here.
this large vessel right here is going to be the pulmonary trunk. And the pulmonary trunk is the vessel that connects to the right ventricle. So if we were to stick our probe in, we could see that, okay, when I stick it in, that's creating, if we were to follow this, that's going into the right ventricle. So therefore, it makes sense to me that this is the pulmonary trunk. Also, it's large um, in diameter, kind of like a tree trunk, and that's a memory trick I gave on uh, the heart models. Then we have a lo another large vessel called the aorta, and that's what this one is right here. The aorta connects with the right ventricle. So again, if I were just to carefully stick my probe in there, and we were to follow this, where is that headed? That's headed towards the left ventricle. So again, that large diameter vessel that connects to the left ventricle is the aorta. Okay, then we have the vena cava, and we have the superior and inferior vena cava. And the best way to view the um, right atrium is on the pig heart is if you, if you actually flip it over to the posterior side. So here, you can see this large diameter vessel right here. This is going right into that right atrium. And you notice the probe doesn't go down as far, and that's a memory trick I like to give students that reminds you, okay, if the probe isn't really going in, that must mean it's in one of the superior chambers. So we always wanna use these little clues to help us figure out what these vessels are because as you can see, nothing is color-coded. So that is the superior vena cava. The inferior vena cava is actually in a, in a spot that you, you may not think it would be, and it surprised me at least when I started looking at this specimen. This opening right here, again, if we were to go, I can't really go far and you can actually see it poking over here. That is the inferior vena cava. Okay, so now let's take a look at the cut heart. The first thing I suggest students do is that you pick it up and you try to match, match what you're looking at to the whole heart. Um, if you're still not sure, then you should open it up like so. And when you open it up, something is going to very quickly tell you, not only left and right, but if you're looking at the anterior or the posterior side. And that would be the heart wall layers. So again, we know we're looking at the ventricles here because that's what these represent. This is actually gonna be the right ventricle, and this will be the left ventricle. And how do we know that for certain? Well, let's look at those heart walls. Remember the outermost layer, that is called the epicardium. We also know, know this as the visceral pericardium. This middle muscular layer right here is the myocardium, and then right on the inside, basically the inside lining, that will be the endocardium. And remember that endo means within, so that kind of makes sense. Endocardium within, myocardium, M for middle perhaps, but really M for, for muscle. And then the epi, epi meaning above, you can kind of think of that as the outer layer or the visceral pericardium. The myocardium, of the left ventricle is about three times thicker than the myocardium of the right ventricle. So here we can very clearly see that that myocardium is real thick over here. So that's kind of a very quick giveaway that, hey, this is the left side of the heart. So again, we're looking at the ventricles. This is that interventricular septum with that anterior interventricular sulcus right here. To better visualize the atria, let's flip it over. So if we go like this, we can better visualize the right atrium and then the left atrium. 
Something else that's very interesting is that the right ventricle has this structure called the moderator band. And the moderator band serves as a conduction pathway. So when you look at the, conduct, the conduction system of the heart with those uh, two nodes, and then the bundle branches and the Purkinje fibers, this moderator band is part of that conduction system and just serves as a conduction pathway from that interventricular septum to the right ventricular wall. The left ventricle does not have a moderator band. So that is another way you can tell the difference between right and left. Remember that we have valves, AV valves, atrioventricular valves. Those connect the atria to the ventricles. So on the right side, that AV valve is called the tricuspid valve. And that's what this structure is right here. Okay, so this right here is the tricuspid, which means on the left side, we have the bicuspid. These little strings you see here, those are called tendinous cords or cordy tendinii. That's where that saying, oh, you're pulling on my heartstrings comes from. And those tendinous cords are attached to the papillary muscles. So those tendinous cords are attached to papillary muscles. Other things we want to note, within the atria, we have what is called pectinate muscle. Pectin refers to comb-like, so it kind of looks like, you know, someone just took a comb and ran through it. So that's indicative of the atria. And in the ventricles, we have kind of these deeper uh, wrinkly parts. Those are called trabeculae carni, which actually kind of loosely translate to flesh beams or meat columns, which is pretty weird. Okay, something else I'd like to show are the semilunar valves. So remember, the doorway out of the right ventricle towards the lungs is the pulmonary semilunar valve. And we actually had to cut through that on the specimen to show everything else, but that's what this is. And if you're not sure, you know, if we kind of piece this together, remind yourself, what is the name of that vessel? Oh, that's the pulmonary trunk, which means this part right here is part of the pulmonary semilunar valve. The one that is connected to the left ventricle is the aortic semilunar valve. And that is right here. Again, if that's if you're not quite sure, kind of smush it together like this and think, okay, there's that large vessel right there that they just cut through but also it's directly connected to that left ventricle. So again, just to kind of illustrate this, if remember when I had the probe like this, on this specimen, this is what it looked like. Okay, so you see how those actually look the same, but here we kind of have the cut through version. And then if I were to do the same thing with the aorta, just need to gently put this through there. That probe looks just like this. So hopefully you guys are kind of seeing the x-ray vision version right here with the part that's much harder to see because things are closed up.
Okay, the last thing I'd like to show you is something within the right atrium. A little bit hard to see, so we have to kind of peel things back. Remember we have three openings into the right atrium. We have the superior vena cava, we have the inferior vena cava. We also have the coronary sinus, and that's what this opening is right here. Remember that coronary sinus is that large vessel. I don't know if you can see me kind of poking through that. All of the deoxygenated blood from the myocardial wall is gonna come back to that coronary sinus, and the coronary sinus is what delivers that deoxygenated blood into the right atrium. But there's something else, and that's this little structure right here, and that is actually the fossa ovalis. And when we go over the embryological development chapter, and also fetal development, we talk about this again, because this is actually a fetal remnant called the foramen ovale. So look out for that video. We'll make a little bridge between the two. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Please hit like and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. See you next time.